Hello everyone from the Novetch team. Welcome to today's webinar, Introducing Twinmotion 2018, the newest 3D immersion software. Twinmotion is the only software on the market capable of producing in real time stereoscopic images, panoramas, videos of the highest quality, and also 360 degrees videos. Twinmotion works perfectly for both Windows and Mac. Today's webinar presenter, uh, Ildiko Zabo is uh, trained as an architect and has been a member of the Advent team since 2001. Over the years, Ildiko has acquired vast experience in architectural visualization in general. She has followed the evolution of software technologies and welcomed new solutions like Twinmotion. And now let me tell you a little bit about Novage. Novage is one of the largest online stores for design software, and we offer a huge assortment of software solutions um, for every designer's need. And here you can see the page where we have uh, Twinmotion 2018 on display. So come check it out and um, feel free to browse around to all the design products that we offer. And for more daily software news and limited time promotions, also check out the Novag blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. And now without further ado, I will share um, Ildiko's screen and she'll walk you through uh, to Emotion 2018. Enjoy. With uh, these examples, I would like to introduce you into the revolutionary new world of Twinmotion 2018. The first and the most important novelty is that Twinmotion has been empowered by Unreal Engine, the world leader engine for gaming. Twinmotion implements the real-time technology of Unreal and adapts it for architectural presentation needs. As a result, Twinmotion introduces world-class novelties and gains a lot in performance. Thanks to this uh, technology, Twinmotion is the first to make a GPU-based application accessible for Macintosh users. Twinmotion also introduces add-ins for ARCHICAD and Revit to make the synchronization process done in one click. Therefore, to show you this full process, I will start my demonstration from the modeler. My example features a library building in Vennesla, done in Norway, and it was modeled in ARCHICAD. In fact, this add-in is available for ARCHICAD 19, 2021, as well as Revit 2016, 17, and 2018. So uh, let me see what was modeled. First of all, the building of the library, of course, with all its details, materials, so forth. The surroundings were added to it. Some library parts like uh, these uh, people or some billboard trees just to enrich the scene. So this will be synchronized with one click. Just clicking on this eye icon in Twinmotion, I get a palette, a dialog asking whether this is a new project or an already existing one. This uh, model will be synchronized for the first time, so I chose new project. And the synchronization was finished. And I uh, got in twin motion all the geometry, of course, and even the library parts were transferred. I can have this uh, billboard uh, person was changed into a library part uh, of Twinmotion, which is an animated person. Trees also were changed into 3D trees, uh, also Twinmotion library parts, which uh, are behaving up to a weather condition, so they are looking very lifelike. And here is the library building, and I can start to make uh, changes. What shall I change? Maybe the hour of the day for a morning hour where I have more light on the facade. Let's go for this. Maybe I change a material on the floor. I'm browsing my uh, material library, choosing a nice uh, finishing for the floor. Let's uh, opt for this one. What if I would like to make a 
change in ARCHICAD. So if I would like, for example, to change the window panes because uh, the slanted ones uh, are not so nice, let's go for a perpendicular distribution of them. So I go back into my modeler and make this change in a very short time only by changing the visibility of some layer combination. So set visible the perpendicular distribution of these uh, window panes. Here it is. Uh, let me synchronize again. The synchronization was done. I have the changes done in ARCHICAD and I also have the changes I started to do in twin motion so the material the light change is here now let me go inside the building check out what uh, we can have in the interior if i find this interior is a little bit dark then i can change the global illumination settings because uh, twin motion calculates the scene in global illumination that's also a novelty an important novelty of this version I select the material of the floor. I continue with the materials. So the dock highlights the settings and I can start to do changes. As I increase the reflection, I notice that there are nice realistic reflections because uh, Twin Motion from now on deals with the physically based materials able to reflect the surroundings correctly. Maybe I want to change this parquet, so I browse again my library and I notice beautiful content, brand new content of uh, this version's library. Let me apply uh, maybe this uh, parquet if I want to make any changes, but maybe the scene is already appropriate to be saved and rendered as a first presentation. So let me save this uh, camera position in the image with this big plus sign. The save was done. And maybe I add to it uh, an exterior view. Let me select the camera position for the exterior. Nice. Save it, the camera view, and I'm ready to calculate to send for the calculation these two renderings start the process of course i have to choose a folder where to and okay the calculation is started and even finished now i'm ready to check out what what is the result here are the renderings. The interior one, calculated in global illumination with physically based materials. And the next one, uh, the facade, also with the nice shadows. Three things are very important to point out uh, here. First of all, how fast we could achieve these uh, calculated renderings. Because uh, this one-click sync, this smart uh, data transferred to over twin motion by changing, replacing the library parts. The second thing is the speed of the calculation itself. Because uh, these uh, two full HD size renderings were calculated in less than 10 seconds. And the third thing is uh, the consistency of this finally calculated rendering with what we had in the preview window. Let me go back into Twin Motion and check out and start to introduce you to the interface of the of Twin Motion. For which the one and most important part is uh, the preview window, the so-called viewport, where I can follow the evolution of my presentation in real time because every setting will generate a refreshment. The feedback I get here is real. Continuing with the introduction of the interface, at the left-hand side, I have access to the catalog. You already may notice. The right-hand side is the list of all 3D elements we have in the scene. 
And in the doc, we have functions grouped in different ways. The first one is importing. Here, I would like to draw your attention that WinMotion stays compatible with most of the modelers we can find today on the market because its capacity to import the most common file formats, in addition to this one-click sync add-ins for ARCHICAD and Revit, of course. As I browse the doc, I find mostly big icons representing different uh, functions. And as I go deeper into a function, new icons may appear highlighting uh, the settings. A breadcrumb menu here helps me to get back to the previous group of functions. And next to it is a burger menu with the most common uh, functions such as save as, save, uh, import, merge, and so forth. And still here is the preferences. The preferences contains uh, how to change the working units. Of course, they're very common things. It also helps us to set the global illumination value, as I already did previously. And the tab I would like to introduce you is quality. I already mentioned that uh, Twinmotion is a graphic card based application and is the very first to make uh, such an application available for Macintosh users. And this is, can be done because uh, the smart device detection feature of uh, Twinmotion, which is a hidden function, let's say, that uh, goes behind the scene whenever you are installing Twinmotion. In fact, it will check the properties of your computer and ca calibrate the preview window accordingly to low, medium, high, or ultra. These are the different items it calibrates, the view distance, anti-aliasing, post-processing, different effects. They will be calibrated and set to low, medium, or high, or ultra. And all this for the sake of a smooth navigation in the preview. So this is the most important uh, uh, let's say, uh, objective of Twinmotion to help you navigate uh, easily in the preview, whatever computer you have. The good news is that you can overcome and you can customize these settings. So, for example, if you want to have a view distance, so you can push it to ultra, even if you were calibrated to medium. Or, why not, cut it back to spare graphic card power for yourself. It's very important that whatever computer you are using, in fact, whatever calibration we have got from a twin motion, the quality of the final output won't be affected at all. That will be always the best possible. Just to give you an idea about the um, performance of a computer, my computer, for example, uh, runs with uh, an NVIDIA GeForce uh, graphic card, which is a kind of uh, game-oriented uh, one, helping me to be calibrated to Ultra. A Macintosh computer dated uh, to December 2016 certainly will be calibrated to High or maybe Ultra. So uh, this is uh, just uh, some uh, key points to uh, help you orientate in this uh, topic. And with this uh, button, we can come back to the originally default settings uh, suggested by Twinmotion. So this is the quality tab, the key uh, why Twinmotion can run on most of the computers uh, today. Okay, so I'm continuing with the interface. My uh, doc is open at the Nature tab, so let me continue with the weather conditions, where I have two sliders. The upper slider will manage the clouds in the sky, and as I drag the slider to over the right, clouds appear, they are growing in the sky, okay, and I even notice that shadows will disappear in a moment they are masking the sun. The weather can turn rainy. Now I notice raindrops and I can even see the incident, uh, incidence of raindrops in the floor nicely. 
let me get closer to the building to check out whether it rains everywhere or not. And I noticed that right below this roof, next the entrance, the floor stays dry. Because uh, this is also a smart process, so uh, it detects the geometry and it won't rain wherever it cannot rain normally. Let me go back to a nicer view of the facade. We have a nice uh, reflections in these uh, wet patches on the floor. And uh, I'm starting to drag the lower slider, which is about the season. As I drag it to fall, I notice that the leaves of trees uh, turn yellow and they start to fall even. And when it's winter time, the rain changes into a snow. And this is also a smart process because uh, the snow will stay in a different quantity on horizontal sur uh, surfaces compared to uh, slanted ones like the roof. I go back to a rainy summer day to continue with the upper slider, which uh, will stop the rain at a certain moment. Even the clouds are vanishing from the front of the sun. Shadows appear, however, the floor stay wet and we still continue to have the reflections in these uh, wet patches and even it can dry up until we have a no cloudy sky at all. So with these two sliders we can simulate a complete cycle of the weather. Let me keep some clouds in the sky. Okay. And still continuing with the nature tab, I'm just uh, looking for a groundy ground patch. Here it is to set some trees over it. Continue with the vegetation. So back to the nature and open the vegetation tab that already suggests me a set of plants to be distributed over this area and opens the library at the appropriate uh, topic. If I want to add more trees, plants to this selection, I'm welcome to do that or I can browse the full content of the library just to give you an idea about its content that uh, contains trees coming from all over the world. Really, it's a very wide uh, library. Then I make the selection of uh, the plants I want to distribute. I have a brush with a diameter. I set uh, a certain density for it and I'm ready to paint. And because this uh, technology, wherever I'm painting, trees will appear. Let me get closer. And they will start to behave depending on the weather conditions, of course. Maybe I should add some grass. If I paint anywhere I shouldn't, there is a eraser, of course, so I can clean up those parts. Even closer to see the realism of these plants. Fine. Maybe some flowers would be nice. Why not? So this is my little garden done in a very short time with beautiful plants which are really very lifelike. In Twin Motion 2018, it's a very important novelty that we can paint anywhere, in fact, on any surface, not only on the terrains. You have certainly noticed the background. The background is a kind of cyclorama suggested by default whenever I'm opening the for the first time a project in twin motion, which uh, is an image file in fact. I can change or I can even discard so I don't need it. I uh, choose the none option or I choose uh, another image file that features uh, 
small villages, large hills, uh, cities with mountains or uh, different uh, views, landscapes. I can uh, rotate the content so I can change the location. Fine. Okay. So this is uh, the background feature for uh, mask to mask the horizon. Another nice feature is to add context to our buildings where I'm browsing the internet, in fact, a worldwide map. Let me choose Venesla on this map. It detects that it's Norway, it takes me there. I'm searching the surroundings of this library. Of course, uh, I won't grab precisely the surroundings, just to give you an idea about how it works. So I have a kind of selection tool. I'm grabbing a portion close to the library and downloading the content from the internet right into my scene. Okay, it was downloaded. Let me select it. Here it is. And place it, position it at the right distance from the rest of the building nicely. What if I want to change anything to such a building? If I select one of them, the dock highlights me the setting for the height. This is a kind of crucial setting for any building. Maybe it got a new floor or maybe it was changed something to this height. Then I can set it precisely or I can even delete it. So just uh, deleting the building means that I can replace it with my project. So just imagine a project where you have the context uh, downloaded that also contains your uh, building but you can uh, delete it and replace it with your uh, detailed uh, model. So we already have a road that should be um, animated with some cars, vehicles. I get the pencil and start to draw a path for these cars which uh, are circulating in a moment they were added to the scene I'm getting closer to them just to let you um, see how nice realistic cars we have now in the library of Twinmotion which was uh, completely updated, renewed and the dock with its settings allows me to change this path just to change the number of lanes, to make it in two lanes, to change the offset of the lane, the density of the car. I'm, I will lower it, uh, maybe increase a little bit the speed. And if I want to change anything to this uh, path, okay. Here it is. And once the cars are circulating on this road, let me add some street lamps from my library, city street lamps. Grab such a lamp in the scene. Adjust its position and grab some multiple copies along the road. How many? Let's go for seven. If it's not fine and well done, I can still reposition them. Get them closer to the road, fine. Okay. And I'm ready to make uh, some changes like the hour of the day. Let me go for a kind of sunset period and even further 
when uh, the sun is down. We have only the street lamp lit in the scene, the car headlights, and even the background features a night city landscape. Because uh, the background images are reacting uh, to the light conditions if it's about a city. It depends, because uh, if it's about uh, nature, mountains, let's see, then the season will be the uh, setting that will change their behavior. Artificial lights also have uh, some inbuilt knowledge to be turned on and off depending on an hour of the day. So if I go back to a kind of daytime, I notice that they are turned off. Street lamps as well as the headlights of the car because uh, it, they were set so. So let me go back to my previous scene. Okay. And check out uh, people. Here I'm just uh, checking, watching. To continue with the rest of the library parts, we can change into in motion. And I'm just uh, looking for this lady. She was uh, coming from the Archicad model and replaced uh, with a twin motion uh, library part, an animated person. So next to her, I will drag another lady, another character, and for this reason I'm browsing the library with characters. Here she is. Let me adjust her position. And drag once again the same lady. If they are dressed in the same way, she will have a different behavior. Because uh, Twin Motion will uh, know that the same character is already in the scene and give it a different posture or give her a different clothing. So this uh, change at random helps us to avoid repetitions. In the dock, we can continue to change uh, the clothing if we wish, or to change the posture for this lady. She can speak, she can sit, she can lie on the floor, she can dance. And if a setting is done, added, then there might be several animated ways she can do that. So different dancing styles, why not? Fine, so let's make her speak with the lady next to her while I'm just uh, picking up a different camera view to add more people to the scene to populate in fact uh, this square a little bit uh, with some group of people also coming from the library of Twin Motion. I make the selection right in the library and once selected, they can be placed in the scene here and there. And if one of the groups were added to the scene already, Twin Motion to avoid the repetition randomly will add a different behavior, a different loading uh, to these uh, persons. That can be also assigned to people. Uh, let me check uh, quickly to add, uh, grab another camera view and create uh, a path for some characters crossing this street, this square, better say. Let's say they are coming from this direction. Okay, entering. and leaving over there. Fine. Now let's check out what they can do. So they are circulating once the path was ready. And in the dock, we can dress them in different ways. We can assign them different activities. They can be office people then they will have different 
behaviors, different accessories. Um, the width of the path can be worked out, the density of the people. And if there are many people, I can stop them. I can simulate uh, a queue, why not? And being stopped, they will have uh, postures according to their position. Density, just a random passage of some pedestrians across the sea, the square, fine. So let's go for this. Okay. What can we export from Twin Motion? What can be uh, achieved as a presentation? Images, of course, 2D still images. We already still saw how it works. Videos can be saved also with Twin Motion. To do that, it's very easy. I save the first frame, the same camera position, the first camera position, and then select a second camera position that will be added for the next end frame. And in between, Twinmotion will interpolate, will calculate the additional frames. The length of such a presentation can be changed, of course. And when it's about the output, when I'm saving such videos, I select the video. And among the settings, I notice that they can be rendered as a standard video, either a 3D video or a 360 video. So Twinmotion is one of the first to offer such a presentations and videos 360 degrees in 3D. Let me show you a nice example of such a video done uh, about this Venesla project from this interior which was uploaded to YouTube. It's a 360 degree video, so we can turn around while the camera performs its path. And even more, this can be watched on uh, with a Google Glass or VR gear. So just imagine your scenes rendered this way and having a full sensation of a 3D. Okay, let me go back to Twin Motion because there are still presentation mode to be listed. Panoramas, this is the next one. To save a panorama, of course, it's very easy it will generate a spherical panorama image in 360 degrees that can be uploaded afterwards on iVisit, iVisit being an online service which helps us to distribute our presentations, to share our presentation by simply sending a link to any who we would like to. And the last presentation mode is called Bimotion. Bimotion is an executive file that generates uh, twin motion, allowing to anybody to have this uh, full immersion into the project, free navigation, exactly we did in twin motion. Such a Bimotion project can be previewed. So let me preview it now and generate such a preview. First of all, uh, whenever I'm opening this icon, here it is, you may note that there is a VR gear, a VR glass uh, icon. It means that even in Bimotion, we can connect uh, such a glass and navigate uh, uh, have, with the help of an Oculus uh, Rift or uh, HTC Vive, why not? The same can be done in Bimotion. So generating the preview for Bimotion means one click and the navigation is the same as in Twinmotion.
the way I'm navigating can be set here too in different ways. First of all, I'm navigating in train motion with uh, these uh, keyboard shortcuts and mouse buttons. That's an option for B motion as well, or you can add a gamepad to it. Uh, such a B motion can be also viewed uh, with the uh, Oculus uh, Glass or HTC Vive glasses by enabling this option. Okay. And the camera here can be turned into a pedestrian. It means that if uh, this option is on, I won't be able to lift the camera. It will always stay at an eye level. Uh, it will detect the geometry. I will be able to enter only through the door into the buildings. I have to disable it in order to lift the camera and make a kind of fly tree. Such a beam motion will also contain the saved camera positions and the saved clips and animations. We can review these clips. And the timeline will stay at our disposal to change the hour of the day at any moment. So I hope you enjoyed my presentation of Twin Motion. I keep this as a final scene and uh, thank you for your attention. Well, that's wonderful. Welcome back. I hope you're joining us back for the Q&A. We're waiting for Ildiko to um, make the transition back to go to webinar. Uh, that I'm was wonderful. <laughs> that was what a show, Ildiko. That's wonderful. And we, <laughs> we gather a few questions in the meantime. The first and foremost, um, is it possible? I mean, is there... Um, is there any plan in the future to have twin motion replace Atlantis altogether? Is this something that you see <laughs> happening in the future? And there's a few of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that occurs, these questions, uh, whenever I'm presenting twin motion. Uh, who knows? Maybe uh, <laughs> the okay. prophet speaks on you. Um, there is uh, nothing planned yet, so I can't say anything about that. Okay, okay, oh good, because I, okay, because of, you know, we sell both to Emotion and Atlantis, and they're both going strong, so I don't want to discourage anybody that loves Atlantis to drop out, or, there but, you know. Approach, if I may add, uh, uh, Atlantis uh, approaches uh, the light uh, behavior in a very realistic manner, so it, it uh, follows really the light until complete absorption, and it, uh, it struggles and it, it, it's, it's uh, focused to produce scenes uh, in a very, um, how to say, um, correct way of lighting. At the same time, um, Twin Motion uh, provides scenes uh, lit in global illumination, but compared to what uh, Atlantis can achieve, uh, let's say it's a kind of estimation of the light. It's a kind of light propagation volume of Unreal Engine was implemented into this version of Twin Motion, a kind of simplified uh, radiosity, which is already much better than what we had in previous versions of Twin Motion, but uh, it's far less uh, precise as uh, accurate as Atlantis calculates. So uh, each renderer has its own um, purpose and uh, 
merging them the two who knows okay oh. okay no that was a great explanation and um yeah there's you know different needs different uh, approaches that's great yeah. and uh uh uh, uh, there's another question. Um, there will be any add-ins for vector works in in the works? Uh, to, for vector works? For vector works. Any add-on uh -huh. to an export for vector works that you see, see. coming? Uh -huh. um, yes, uh, there are plans to do more add-ins. The most important ones uh, are Archicad and Revit. They are already on. And Hopefully, uh, the new add-ins uh, will uh, be available. Until then, you can uh, go transfer your uh, geometry or content to FBX, OBJ, or Cinema 4D formats. Uh, all this is SketchUp file format. These are the import formats of Twinmotion, which are supported. OK. Thank you. And um, Neil was asking um, that if the view model location uh, is aware uh, of the specific location on Earth uh, so that the quality of light matches a specific geographic location. Is that correct? Yes, you can locate your model, absolutely. And you can choose a period of the year, uh, an hour of the day, as you can see. Uh, you could see, uh, so you can uh, produce a correct lighting, a kind of sun study for your project. Okay. Is it possible to speed up navigation movement? Um, while I'm preparing my presentation, uh, yes, while I'm navigating in twin motion, there are three different uh, speeds for uh, navigate to navigate in twin motion. You can do it um, as a pedestrian. You can make it faster to uh, go like a car and or fly as an airplane. So there are three different levels of speed. Okay, and uh, Scott says I played with trial uh, when making materials or adjusting materials. Is there a back button after you edit a material? Uh, what do you mean back button? I think it means if you want to revert with the original material. Is there a way to just go back to the original? I see. I'm thinking. Uh huh. Um, no, uh, maybe you can undo so, but um, okay. Uh, you can edit your own materials and then you uh, drop again material that was uh, previously on Twin Motion. So uh, all those materials which uh, were used in your scene are recorded in the doc. They are listed, even if they are not uh, active in the scene. So they are not assigned anymore to any surface. Uh, they appear in that little list, so you can reapply it on surfaces. Okay, and uh, Rob is asking if there's, a, you know, somewhere maybe online or on your website, a comparison matrix to show what the motion is best at versus Atlant Atlantis. If there's such uh, a comparison chart. <laughs> No, there is no such a comparison because um, we cannot say uh, one is better than compared to the other one. Um, it is different compared to the other one. Another big difference um, compared to what I already mentioned, so the accuracy of the light calculation itself, that Atlantis is uh, very cautious to do that, while uh, Twin Motion uh, estimates more the light is that uh, Atlantis is a CPU-based application. So um, the calculation, the final calculation also belongs uh, and is done uh, on your processors. While Twinmotion uh, is uh, coming from the gaming uh, uh, softwares, therefore it's a GPU-based application. Based on, uh, it uses very much the graphic card. So this is the uh, reason why we had to do uh, the demonstration to YouTube because uh, GoToWebinar also uses the graphic card and uh, we would have a very bad streaming at the same computer from the same computer and uh, to GoToWebinar. So uh, it means that the calculation of the final rendering with Twinmotion is way much faster than uh, compared to Atlantis. Uh, 
So there are big differences uh, of the two software, both having the same logic of the interface uh, to have uh, to provide a very easy to use uh, interface with a great feedback, a reliable, consistent feedback of what we have will have in the final rendering uh, to the uh, preview window. And this uh, is a very important similarity between the two that uh, makes people think that they will be merged and who knows. But uh, until then, uh, the conception and the most important uh, idea is about uh, reproducing the light behavior. Uh, here is a big difference. The first very important difference, the second one is the speed of the calculation. Okay, great, thank you. And um, returning to the question before this one about the uh, the undo button or the redo, Scott uh, wants to specify that uh, in case you add a map to the material, um, there is no way to get back to color selector without picking material again from the scene. Um, so I was wondering if that's what he meant, actually. You can delete, um, so the maps can be deleted uh, from, um, if you added the diffuse map, for example, you can delete it and come back to the color okay. palette. Okay. Palette. Okay. Um, so, uh, Twinmotion had an online user manual. Is there an online user manual available for Twinmotion uh, 2018? other than these very helpful YouTube videos? Uh, no, not for the moment. Uh, okay. We uh, would like to rely on these uh, YouTube videos, first of all. Um, so there is no online help of a twin motion. Okay, where they'll be? Is it something that you see like coming up with in the future? Uh, we, what we plan is to provide tutorials um, how to do this and that, so kind of a, um, a result, uh, aiming a certain result. Okay. So um, better, I would say, uh, not the online hub, but the online tutorials around different topics uh, would uh, it will be available hopefully soon. Okay, wonderful. Looking forward to these many tutorials uh, this is this was fascinating and the questions uh, have been all answered so i want to thank hildiko for her time today and um, and i want to thank everybody else for joining us and uh, i want to remind everyone that if you want to check out the product or uh, you know get in on a trial just uh, visit noveggie.com where we have both to emotional 2018 and artlantis and to rewatch today's webinar you can find it on the noveg youtube or vimeo channel thanks again eldico have a wonderful day everybody bye bye Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you, Barbara.